Okay. Okay, so before we restart, even for those who follow, attend the class, uh, let's say, remotely by means of the recordings, I remember you about the CPD questionnaire or JCT questionnaire at the end of the course, okay? You can uh, fill it in uh, whenever you like before the end of the course. Okay, so now we are, um, we said uh, we are going to implement all the authentication stuff in our code, okay? So, uh, we open Visual Studio Code. Actually, it's already open, okay? Actually, it's already running, so I just downloaded, uh, as usual, the code uh, from here. Sh week, uh, week number 12, okay? So there will be the login one that we're going to see today, and there will be another one for Thursday, okay, to folders. So in this one, we have uh, more or less the client and the server that we developed uh, last week, but uh, uh, I already did small additions because uh, uh, today there are a lot of modifications to be done, but uh, most of them are uh, quite uh, simple and very mechanical, like adding credentials include in all requests from the client and adding uh, the course uh, with the correct configuration and all this stuff. Okay, so we have a quick look at this stuff. So uh, we are in the server, okay. In the server, Uh, you see that uh, now we have uh, origin, HTTP localhost 5173, we cannot, uh, you know, leave course uh, empty. Credentials uh, true, okay? And then uh, in the client, uh, in the APIs, uh, now we still have to add, uh, you know, the credentials include. Uh, okay, let's stay on the server where I think I did most of the modifications, okay? already. Well, set up passport, uh, local strategy and so on. That's the stuff we had on the slides. Copy and paste. Nothing new. Nothing different. Passport serialize and deserialize. Okay? Here we need to decide what to put inside the section. Okay? That's the option I chose for this example. The section only contains a, a single value, which is actually the user ID. Okay? And uh, when we get the user ID, we go into the database with the user DAO, so a new function, a new module, a function that I wrote, and we go and load the information about the user, okay? So in the DAO user, actually, the get user by ID goes into the table users, which is a new table, because now we have users. Before we didn't have, so we modified the database, we added a table, users. And users have uh, some information. So I have an ID, a username, I chose an email just for simplicity, the row name, no, the, the name, that's a name, the first name, okay? Enrico, John, whatever, okay? Yes? So, so what's, the, what's the purpose of serialize and deserialize, okay? That's uh, what I would like to keep in the, info, uh, in the state associated with the session that it stays on the server, okay? So it up, it's up to me. There's a cookie. The cookie goes back and forth from the server to the client and, and vice versa. But then when you get the cookie from the client to the server, the server goes look for the session and it has some information associated in the session. And in this case, I just chose to associate only a value, the user ID. I could have opened a, a, a curly bracket, so create an object and put whatever you want inside. And this will be remembered by the server and uh, taken out when you uh, receive a request that has that cookie associated with that session. And so you get it uh, here in this ID variable, okay? So you store. In the next time when the server will receive a request from the client, 
Yes? So the session, the same, I will get the same ID. I will get the same ID. Next time I will get uh, the same uh, session ID from the client. I will get in this function the same ID that is uh, associated before with the session. Yes. Otherwise it would be useless. Yes, of course. Okay? Yeah. So it's up to me. Mm, it's up to you. Again, uh, it's your choice. I mean, do as you like. That's a possibility. Okay? Uh, if you have complex data, probably you would like to load it from the server or because it might change. If you have very simple data, just an ID and a name, might be enough to, you know, to load, uh, to keep it in the session uh, storage on the server, in the memory, okay? Uh, indeed, that's why some, some websites tell you, well, you changed uh, some important information about you, your user, your, your email and so on. Now you need to log out and log in. Why? Because typically they keep this information in the session and they don't want to reload it every time, okay? That's a different approach. I mean, advantages and disadvantages. It depends on your case, okay? Okay, then I have, uh, I was saying, well, there's a function that goes into the database and gets information about the ID. So let's have a look and, uh, and, uh, about how the database is organized. So now the question and answers, but also users. And you see that we have users with a certain ID, an email, a name, and then the salt and the password. Remember the discussion we had about uh, hash and salt, okay? Actually, if you like, you can call it this hash, okay? You just need to remember to rename uh, the values uh, in the functions, okay? The, the, the name of the properties in the functions, because, uh, because that's the uh, name of the column that you have in the functions, okay? Uh, how did I determine this string? Well, the password, uh, by, uh, um, password of Enrico is, I don't know, you should write in the readme. <laughs> it's better that you write it down, otherwise you will forget, especially in a few days, okay? I did it uh, a few days ago, so I remember, but I put the same password for all the users, PWD, okay? So you can go and use the salt that you have in the database, users. So you see this salt, uh, copy. I just chose it randomly. I just typed it on the, on the keyboard, okay, randomly. And you go to that website we saw before. Okay, you put the salt here, the length was 32. You see 1168 and so on. No, that's not the same. Uh, copy. It should work, maybe it's longer. I don't know. Maybe it was uh, 64. Well, that's the procedure in any case. Okay. No. Well, that's a procedure, okay? I don't know what's, probably there's something wrong with this, uh, the way I do cut, copy and paste. Or maybe I, I, I use the wrong version of the DB and that's not a password, okay? Let me do an additional attempt, maybe it's password. I forgot to paste password. No, okay, no, it doesn't matter. I hope it works. <laughs> okay, le, le, we will see if it works. Well, actually, we can check it. If it doesn't work, it's a problem. I don't know. Well, no, I don't have the, the implementation yet. Okay, but uh, let's try it. Okay, I will fix it later in case. Okay, so users. Users have an ID. Okay. So now, remember that also the rest of the database needs to be changed a little bit. Like the answers don't have a respondent now, but they have a respondent ID. Okay, that's a foreign key. Okay, I didn't put it explicitly in the schema, but it's basically a foreign key. It's up to you if you if you like to have these foreign key constraints and stuff, you can use them when you declare uh, the database schema. Otherwise, uh, you know, it doesn't really matter. Uh, you handle, you know, things correctly with the query, and that's enough. Okay, this is not a database uh, class. Okay. Um, yeah. 
So that's the modifications I did, and of course uh, that's all uh, the stuff of the session, use session, uh, with the parameters. I just put a random value here, okay? Uh, initialize and stuff, okay? And then there will be some methods that you just need to copy and paste, nothing really special here, okay? Post the sessions. So it creates a, 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 a session. That's why I like to create, I like to call it API sessions post. It's like a creating a session object. But I, I mean, this doesn't really matter. If you have a slash login or slash API login, that's fine, okay? It's just a name. Uh, and nothing really special here, and the same for the rest. The delete is just logout. And then there's this current, uh, which will be useful later when we need to check if a user is authenticated or not, okay? So in case it's authenticated, we will get, uh, okay, the rec user object, otherwise a message, okay? And this is useful for the application later. Uh, okay, I think it's all for the modifications on the server side, which are the more you know, uh, tedious ones, more boring ones, so uh, that's why I already prepared them, okay? Let's focus on what we should do on the client, okay? So first of all, we need to create a page with the login form, okay? Actually, it's boring, this one is boring as well, okay? So I already created it. I, I made a new file, login form, username, password, Okay, with something filled in just for convenience because when I, when I arrive on the page, I just have to click login, you know, to speed up the testing. And then uh, there's a form like, uh, you know, uh, username and password. I would like to have an email and the password. So when you type, there's nothing that shows up. Okay, just dots and stuff like that. And the handle submit on the on submit event on the form that uh, goes into a function, prevent default. We don't want to reload the application, remember? And then uh, just uh, some validation, just check if a username and password are not empty, that's fine, okay? And then do login, otherwise set an error message and stay on the page, okay? Um, do login, uh, well, it calls uh, props login successful. Otherwise, uh, yeah, this is the one that calls uh, the, the server, okay? So it's here in this component. API do login, I'm not sure if it's implemented already. Do login, no, API login, oh, it's this side, login. Yes, it's already implemented, okay? With the credentials include content application JSON and we send the credentials and the credentials will be uh, this uh, credentials are an object with two fields, username, the name of the field is username and the value is username as the content of the variable username and password as well, okay? There are the two states, there are controlled, it's a controlled form. Okay, so username and password are always kept in sync with the value that appears uh, or which is inside the form, okay? So let's have a look at this page. It's nice to see the code, but we would like to, look this to have a look at this page. So we should uh, uh, probably assign a route to this page, right? That's the best thing, okay? Otherwise, I need to do as I did before the route, uh, the router. So show login page, uh, or not, okay, it's a state, but this is very convenient. As a router, I have a slash login uh, URL, and that shows the login, okay? Let's check if it's already implemented or not. So that's a router, not yet, okay? So that's the stuff we can do now, login. Okay, so where do we put it? We have slash, and then we add, uh, the index, the add, and the edit, okay? I would recommend that you put it here, outside the so sub-routes, 
okay? Because the login has uh, its own uh, layout and so on. If you would like to have uh, the login inside the layout with the, uh, I don't know, the header and so on, that's one thing, it's possible, okay? My recommendation is for the login page, probably you can have a standalone page, that's enough, okay? Uh, so what's uh, route, uh, path, login, and then uh, element, uh, and that's the, uh, what's the name of the element? I hope I imported it already, login form, yes, and uh, I need to provide a function to call when the login is successful but it's not implemented yet, okay? So don't provide anything yet. So just close it and close the route, okay? Save. So let's try. Actually, we don't have uh, any way of navigating to the login uh, route yet, right? We should have a button or something like a button, do login, okay? We can, we, we can do that, okay, just for the moment, just for the bugging, just to test if everything works. Just check manually if somebody, if something gets loaded with the slash login. Yes, nice. So it exists, okay. Okay, let's fix the rest. So let's create a login button. Where do we put, put the login button? Okay, so that's the application. Well, that's something that should be already av uh, always available. Okay, so my recommendation is to show it in every page. So it's part of the layout probably. Okay, so like a button here. Well, that would be nice, I think. Okay, otherwise you can put it w wherever you want in the page. Right? Just, uh, these are just considerations about the user interface, the best way of designing the user interface. Okay. Uh, do something which is reasonable, okay? We are not asking anything special for the exam, but just something which is reasonable. I land on a page in the application, I need to log in, I need to find a, something visually that allows me to log in, like a button or something that is clearly the place where you can log in, okay? So, um, let's put it here. I don't remember what's the name of the component. Let's check, okay? Nav uh, and so on. Well, this is doesn't help that much. Probably it's better that I have a look uh, here. Okay, that's the layout. That's the whole stuff. My header. Okay, that's my header. My header. Where's my header? I think it's in up. My header. Yes. My header. Okay. So let's put something after the brand, okay? My header. I'm sorry that I always, uh, you know, copy and pasting here, but uh, I need to speed up things. Uh, so we cannot just stay here because the button doesn't stay on the right and, and so on, okay? So uh, basically this is a button, okay? Uh, uh, link, well, it could be a link, right? So that's fine to make it a link, okay? So I, I um, let's include a button in a link. So let's log in and let's include it into a link. It's a URL, right? Login. Okay, save. Let's see if something has changed. Okay, why it doesn't appear? Our brand. I so no, it was no, it was here. Sorry, I was looking at at the button on the right. Okay, okay, it's not very nice. You can personalize as you like. Okay, variant uh, uh, was uh, not danger. Was the uh, warning? Okay. Do whatever you like, okay? Login and you move to slash login, okay? And then, and then now you can test uh, the authentication, okay? 
just to you know try to do something uh, useful for today. <laughs> um, so let's see what happens. I'm not really sure wh what is missing. Okay, well, wrong username or password. Okay, so probably I, I've, uh, I've uh, let me see what's the answer. No, uh, the response was fine, right? So 200, okay. And we also got the information about the user. So what it says wrong username or password? I don't really know. Probably there's something missing somewhere. Um, so let's have a look at the state, okay? First of all, check uh, everything is fine. So Arif, password, wrong username and password. So somebody has set this message, but I'm not really sure who set the message. Um, out. Oops. So. Wrong username and password. Probably that's an error here. Okay, uh, I think that's because th that's a bit difficult to debug. That's probably because the props is not defined, so it creates an exception get get code here. So login successful. Okay, that's something we need to pass to login form. Okay. I know it's a bit difficult to debug. Since we don't have time, I, I, I'll give you the answer. Okay, but then if you run into a problem like this by yourself, you write console log a, a lot here and there until you understand, you know, which places of the, which part of the code gets executed and uh, you understand the logic, okay? And uh, at a certain point you arrive at the conclusion that there's, there's a problem here. Like uh, if you try to, I don't know, pr uh, print the set of props or check the set of props. Actually, we can check the set of props for login form. Okay. You see login form. This is login form. Yes. You see that the props are empty. So props dot something is not a method that can be called. But unfortunately, since you have the catch, it gets, it goes into the catch and it doesn't give me an error in the console that would be much easier. Okay. But maybe, you are developing this stuff. We can try. Okay. Let me see. Save. Let's log in again. You see the error in the console now. Okay. Pros login successful is not a function because I, I forgot to pass it as an attribute. Okay. To the, to the component. Okay. What you are developing, maybe you didn't write the catch yet. And you, you, it's easier to, to, to understand. Okay. Um, the login, uh, so we need to pass login successful, that's login form that was in the app, right? That's the stuff I was doing before in the route. Login form, so we need to login form, no, login successful, that's uh, login successful yes we need to pass a function okay that we still have to write so let's write it in some place okay let's write it here function function login uh, successful um, what does it take and what does it uh, do um, Ah, uh, no, const, okay, or a function, etc., but not an arrow function. Okay, well, actually, uh, let's see what I'm passing here. I'm passing user, so I'm getting the user. The user that comes from the promise, uh, basically, uh, that's the stuff that comes from the server, okay? So, API, then user, user, that's the stuff that comes from the server. Uh, so, user. What do I do with the user? I told you before in the slides, we need to store the information about the user. It's information that comes from the server. The place is a state, a state in the application. 
We need to create a state. Okay, so let's go and create a state. Uh, let me see. Uh, use state. Uh, where did I put it? So when I when I commit, it's a bit uh, less difficult for me to check everything is fine. Okay, const user set user. Okay, uh, and then it's uh, um, use state of course. What do we put in the beginning? Whatever you want. I mean, uh, it's it's an object. Uh, probably undefined is fine. Okay, we could do it, leave it uh, empty. It's undefined by by default. Okay, and once uh, it, it, it's used, it will be updated. Okay, so in this uh, login. Okay, what's uh, I was wondering what's uh, wrong here. Ah, yes. Let's uh, copy and paste. Okay. Sometimes I do some... Picture. Okay. I will check if everything is fine later. Okay. Uh, login successful. So, set user. User. Okay. And then... And then, uh, I mean, it's uh, it's up to us to decide, uh, do we need additional states or not? Uh, uh, do we need to load additional data, reload the data? Well, depends, okay? At the moment, uh, uh, I mean, the data was loaded. Right, so in the beginning, well, there's a, n now there's something wrong in, in the code, but uh, I mean, um, we could do set dirty true in case we need to load data and so on, okay? I would do that, set dirty true, okay? That's because uh, typically in an application like this, um, there's some information that you get uh, without being authenticated. And then maybe there's additional information that you can get if you call the get function from the server with the authentication in place, okay? Let's see what's wrong. Uh, uh, okay, link. Okay, there's something. This computer does what it wants, okay? So, that's what I did, that's what is missing, right? So I just uh, deleted a part of the code, okay. I just pressed uh, some, uh, okay. Some buttons while uh, scrolling, uh, and it overwrote, it, it, it uh, did the, it over, uh, something was overwritten, okay? So now let's try to log in. Okay? Yeah, it worked, right? So post API session, at least we don't have the warning, the error message, okay? What's missing here? I mean, the status, the state, I it's updated. You see, that's a, ID4, name Harry, and so on. What's missing? Only the navigation. After a successful um, uh, login, I need to go in another page. I cannot stay on the slash login page, right? Otherwise, it's useless. <laughs> it's just the form. Okay, I have the information, but I don't show it. So where do I, I put the navigation? Thinking out, that was the 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 place uh, where I put it, out oh, components, right? Yes, I I, I left it out uh, just to show you. I I could have done it before, right? So uh, out, okay. So here, logging successful. I call the function. I set the state, and then navigate slash. If slash is the place, 
it could be slash protected slash uh, whatever place you show the the uh, you know the private information and so on okay uh, navigate do I have it yes okay save let's try again that's why I would like to have uh, you know the profile the form because I'm doing click many times okay so this information shows up login login okay and now I go back okay but the difference is that in the beginning look at this state I don't have this state set okay so let's try again you see that the state is undefined I do the login login and this this is uh, filled in now okay okay fine so one of the things I could do is uh, if there's a login button here now I'm logged in I would like to have a logout button right instead of a login button okay so how do I do this well my recommendation is in app okay let's have an additional state const uh, uh, logged in what's the name use state uh, no that's the other one uh, yeah logged in set logged in a boolean value because it's easier to handle it's somehow a sort of d duplicate but um, in the sense that if a user is not undefined you could use this value saying well it's not undefined I'm logged in okay may not be the same in all conditions for all applications so that's why I would like to show you that if you have a boolean value sometimes uh, it's useful uh, as well also it's clearer when you write the code okay so let's say that uh, in the login set uh, logged in true okay and then we will have a logout set logged in false okay and then here instead of showing well actually I'm not showing now any f no not the login form the uh, the answer route uh, which has the uh, the header okay I need to pass uh, it's in the header yes what's the header my header okay that's a layout sorry was the layout okay <coughs> so it's in the layout we need to pass the user okay user and maybe you can pass the logged in okay uh, and that's all for now layout in my header you pass the user user here there's a prop user uh, logged in props logged in okay and then we go to the my header uh, yes and so here we can write uh, let's do something like this if so props uh, logged in yes button log out okay variant uh, uh, danger log out okay otherwise you can have the link with the login uh, okay well let's format it a bit better okay let's try well actually you already see that uh, since this there's this hot reloading mechanism actually the state has been kept no not kept sorry let's reload the application that's easier 
No, log out, okay. But I, no, log out, set logged in. What's, what's the initial value of logged in? Of course, that's false, right? In the beginning, I'm, I'm not logged in. Okay, sorry. So, in the beginning, I, I'm not logged in. So I chose the login button. That's a route. It goes to login. I log in and it shows log out. Okay? And this is the state. The, the is logged in. That's the true that you see on the bottom right. Okay? And now we need to make the log out work. Okay? The same mechanism. Okay? So uh let's go and see no log out on click just to you know try a different uh, way okay well actually no we we need uh, to have the on click right because uh, we need to pass a logout function with that we would like to keep here okay so const uh, uh what's the logout function logout Do log out. I call it lo do log out because I like complicated things. <laughs> okay, do log out. Uh, well, yeah, I implemented with the await. Okay, so just to try. Let's see how it works. Okay, you can do with the promise then catch. It's fine. Okay, but just to show you something different, await. Uh, API log out. Okay. Actually, I must tell you, I don't care about the result. Either uh, the, the API logs me out or I cannot do anything. <laughs> okay. So that's the only thing I need to do. Okay. Why it's wrong? Hey, wait. Okay. Are only allowed within async functions. Async. Okay. And then set log in false. What's this button? False. And set user. It's uh, undefined. And then, uh, and then uh, depends. Uh, set uh, dirty. Depends on the application logic. Uh, maybe it it, it has a. Uh, it makes sense to, to do it, uh, maybe it doesn't matter, okay? Do log out, uh, we need to pass it uh, to the layout, right? Yes, log out. Do log out, okay? And then we get it into the my header, okay, that's here. Log out, props log out. Okay, and then we go to the header, and then we know how uh, what to write inside the on click. Okay, here we cannot use a link because we have a function to call. That's props log out. Okay, props, uh, props log out. Okay, oops, save. So. The, it's not a different uh, link in the router. It's not a different URL. Just a state that gets changed and an API call that is done towards the server. Okay? So, uh, let's see if it works. Okay? So, again, reload everything from scratch. So, let's log in and we will ch change these states, the user and the logged in. Log in, fine. Log out. So now I press log out. This stuff should disappear, but I don't change the route. So it's still slash. So the, the landing page, the initial page. So this changes. Did I send the log, the log out? Yes. Delete. Header. API sessions current. Delete. The answer was 200 OK. Fine. OK. I'm logged out. OK. 
Uh, okay. Um, fine. So what can we do next? Uh, well, um, I should uh, allow modifications to the answers only on the uh, answers that belong to me. Okay? So we can implement something on the server side and on the client side that uh, limit what I can do as a non-logged in user. Okay? So a logged in user can modify its own answers. A non-logged in user can only vote the answers. Okay? Uh, so first, first go to the server. The server is the most important part. That's also the one that we will check carefully at the exam. Because it's the server that prevents and authorizes the users from doing things, uh, operations on the database. It's not the client. Client can be bypassed. Okay? Uh, so, let's see, for instance, uh, delete. Okay? Delete. This delete uh, actually takes an ID and just performs the deletion. So I don't like it in this form, right? So, uh, what's so I need to go and, uh, and uh, change, okay? First, make this API authenticated, okay? How do I make it? I need to call rec.isAuthenticated, right? Uh, I, I skipped a slide before in the, in the discussion. Okay, that was this one. Since I need to call the rack is authenticated so many times in my server, I prefer to create a middleware. Okay, so things are easier to implement. And the middleware is uh, just a function that takes three parameters, re res, rec, rec, res, and next. Okay? A mid express middleware, so an e a middleware for the express uh, library. And if rec is authenticated, everything is fine. Return next, so it calls the next middleware that we will handle the request. Otherwise, it simply returns and doesn't call next, and it says not authenticated. Okay. Otherwise, I have to copy and paste this piece of code in any in all of the APIs on the server side, okay? If I implement it in this way, I can simply write this logged in as a parameter of the uh, get, post, put, delete, okay? That's at a certain point this middleware is called, okay? To check if it's authenticated or not. So the is logged in is already present, you see, but it's not used. That's a one of the slides, okay? Just a, a convenient way to avoid the copy and pasting this rack is authenticated, okay? And so we go to the delete. Delete. Okay, is logged in. Okay, now the API is authenticated. It means it does nothing if it doesn't receive a valid session ID. Okay, let's try it. Again. Now I will press here. I try to delete something. Okay? Let's see what happens. You see, not authenticated. So the deleters return 401 no, unauthorized. Okay? That's because I added this is logged in, which I checked if there was a valid session cookie in the request. The request, there were no cookies, you see, no cookies, okay? So this, uh, this operation could not be done on the server side because we decided that this API is authenticated. So if you don't have a valid session cookie, 
I will not do the operation. I will just return an error, an HTTP error. It means not a 200 code, but something else, like 400, which is typically the, the series of numbers for uh, unauthorized or wrong operations. Okay? And this is my convenience. I just show something uh, for the user. Okay? Let's close it. So, now, what should we do? Well, we should log in, right? Log in. We are logged in as Harry. That was the name. Okay? And you see, this, this is the first row. Alice. That's the author. That's the delete button. Now we have a session which is uh, active. Okay? A session ID, which is linked to Harry. This is Alice. Will it work or not? Try. Okay. It doesn't work. Why? This, should, this time should uh, we should get uh, the cookie. No, there's no cookie. Uh, if there's no cookie, there's something wrong. We should set the cookie, right? Ah, uh, yeah. That's why it doesn't work. No cookie, right? You remember the credentials include? That's something that will happen to you during the lab as well, right? Credentials. That's one of the most common errors. Include. Okay? Save. That's a client. This is client code. Okay? Let's reload the application so we are sure what we are doing. Okay? So let's log in as Harry. And let's delete Alice's uh, answer. Okay? It goes through. Why? Because we have a valid session ID. Request. So the cookie. That's a cookie. Uh, the rest is uh, doesn't matter because on localhost I have other stuff. There, there's la other stuff probably. But uh, connect C, th that's the way passport session keeps the cookie. Okay? If you go to the request header, you will see there's cookie. Okay? There's just more than one, but we don't care. Okay? We care only about the one we are interested in, which is this uh, connect seed and so on. Okay? Which, by the way, has been set by the post uh, during authentication. If you see in the response header, there was set cookie with the same cookie, path slash HTTP only option. Okay? So you can debug all this stuff that we have seen on the slides uh, today. Okay, but what's the problem here? Uh, I mean, I don't like that uh, Harry can delete Alice's uh, answers, right? But what's wrong? The route is authenticated, right? Uh, the, the server, where's the server? Server, okay. It's logged in, it means there's a validation ID. It doesn't mean the user is authorized to do the things. The, the, this should be checked by your code, okay? So, this has to be implemented by you. This is one of the most common errors, as I, I told you in the slides. That's that problem. It's not, uh, of course, I expect the route is authenticated because to delete, you need to tell me who you are. But I also need to check if you can do this operation. It's your stuff, it's your data, and so on, okay? So how do we implement this stuff with REC user, okay? So if REC is authenticated, returns true, it means that the session has, has a set this REC user. How? In the way that we decided, with the deserialization that depends on what we put inside. Either this way or the other way, and then we loaded the data from the database. Okay? So just check what's inside the REC user. If you are unsure, console log a REC user. Okay? So you have a look at what's inside. So let's implement this uh, uh, validate. Uh, well, not this validate. Thi actually, this is a application logic. That's why it's so important. It's a check that we, we need to perform on the server side to make sure that only the authorized persons can do the operation. Okay? Authentication means I know it's Harry. Authorization means 
Harry can do this operation. And in this case, it's delete this answer. Okay? So, uh, how do we implement it? Well, let the uh, database check it. Okay? So, let's just pass uh, rec user ID. Rec user ID to the uh, function that handles the database. Delete answer. And then we get uh, the user ID. I think that's the, yeah, uh, DAO, right? Delete. User ID. Okay? And then you need to decide the logic, uh, some, some code that uh, decide if the user is authorized or not to do the operations. Sometimes it's very simple. I mean, you have SQL queries, I mean, where ID equal to and, okay, uh, respondent uh, ID equal to user, user ID, okay? That's the minimum amount of code you should write. You make the database check if the operation is possible or not, okay? It will return zero, um, zero deletions in case uh, it cannot be done, okay? Fine. That's just SQL. The, the condition will be false if the respondent ID is not uh, the user that is making the request. Very simple, but very effective. Answer as a respondent ID, you see? Okay, four was uh, Harry, and another one, ah, I deleted the Alice one, okay? So, stop, uh, GP, copy, QA initial, QA DB, okay? Overwrite, run the server again, okay? And I will get the original database. That's why you should make a backup copy of the database. So it's easier to test, okay? So four off uh, was three and three was Alice, right? Yes, okay? So I run an operation like, uh, you know, the deletion, uh, trying to delete uh, answer ID one with respondent ID equal to four. It will not happen, okay? That's all. Let's see what happens on the client side. Okay, so reload again. I know it's boring. Authentication is a bit long to implement, I know. And now I'm authenticated as Harry, right? I can press the button, right? You see, when it reloads the application from the server, the answer has not been deleted, okay? We still get okay. I mean, you can personalize the answer from the server. That's up to you. If you would like to do, that's fine. You can say not authorized. I don't really care about this, as long as the interface is reasonable and the check on the server is working, okay? So, actually, why the interface allows me to press the delete button if it's, I'm not the owner, okay? There's no reason. Let's make the user interface a bit better, okay? Let's disable the button. So I don't press the button uh, for, for, uh, um, for answer that I cannot delete, okay? This is not security, it's just uh, a matter of uh, good user interface, okay? You have uh, things disabled where you shouldn't touch. But that's not about security. Security has been implemented already. That's the server. He is logged in and the way to make sure that the thing doesn't happen if you're not authorized. We modify the SQL query. That's the thing that we will check at the exam, okay? Because anybody can say the request, even can send the request, even if you disable the button. I look here, okay? I take the cookie and I open the rest, uh, REST client and so on, or whatever program you like, you send, you decide what to send and you send a request. And the only place where you can stop this operation from happening is the server, okay? 
only the server. Okay? Of course, you need to have a, a valid session ID, but if you have a million users logged in in your website, there's a million sessions ID, valid sessions ID around that you recognize as a valid session ID. But there will be only one session ID linked to the user that can do the operation. And if it's not that session ID, okay, so if, if, if uh, uh, you don't check that the session ID is a user connected to the session ID, that is the one that can ch do the operation, anybody who is, uh, uh, um, who is authenticated with the website, so as a valid session ID, can pass the is logged in check. So this check, okay? So this check, where is this check? This check can be passed by one million users, one million sessions, okay, active sessions. But the check that you do later in the delete answer, so respondent ID is the one which is linked to the session, can be passed only by the one who logged in as the user, okay? Not all the other, uh, not all the rest of million, or millions of uh, uh, valid sessions like this, okay? And in this million of session like this, there could be the attacker, okay? Somebody that tried to disrupt uh, your website or the way uh, it works and so on, okay? Try to delete the data or inject data or whatever, okay? So the check has to be done on the server. And then for convenience, we also make a nice user interface for the user because we expect that 99% of the users are not malicious users, are just users. And so they can do mistakes like me. Click, okay, I'm just sending a, a wrong request just by chance, just by any reason, okay? So let's disable this stuff. How can we do? We have a state in the application. So the state uh, was the application. The state is, uh, yeah, user and logged in, okay? Logged in is not enough. We need to know the user, okay? So in the table, I think we need to pass, uh, no, that's the server, route, route, okay? Uh, okay, in the answer route, we need to pass uh, That's the answer route, right? Yes. User, yes, that's user, indeed. Was wondering. <laughs> okay, so the answer route, that is the table, with the answers, okay? It should have user information, okay? And then let's go to the answer route, which need to pass it uh, to the answer table, user props users, user, okay? Here you start to see why a context could be useful, right? A context containing user logged in and uh, dirty maybe could be useful because I don't have to do all this uh, passing props around, okay? I didn't implement it as a context because I didn't want to you know, increase the complexity of, of the code, okay? But, so you, you also understand why a context could be useful sometimes. So let's go to the answer table. Answer table, there's a answer row, okay? So let me see how did I implement the answer row. So, answer components, answer row. So I think uh, there was a user ID, okay. So let's pass a user ID to the answer row, user ID, yes. uh, ID, okay. Uh, props user, okay. Don't forget that props user can be also undefined if you're not logged in, okay. So just make sure you handle all the cases. I cannot, uh, you know, uh, uh, leave it uh, for after because uh, I don't have so much time and then it becomes difficult to debug, but uh, no, uh, use uh, this ID, okay? And then in the answer row, 
you can say answer row uh, answer row that's here no that's the answer row sorry yes answer row okay uh, we could add the property I called it uh, disable user actions okay to make it a bit uh, verbose disable, so I mean explicit actions uh, props uh, props uh, use well respond e respondent id uh, it's uh, different from props user id i brought the same so i commit the same it's easier okay so disable user action goes here into the button and some buttons will be disabled okay i told you i would like everybody to vote but not everybody to click okay so after the click that's a button so uh, disable the uh, props uh, disable user actions okay and the edit as well disabled props uh, disable user action okay you see there are two buttons disabled now and the only button which is uh, enabled is Harry's button because the logged in user is Harry. Okay? Let's log out. Let's log in as an other user, Alice. I think I have the same password, I hope. Okay? You see, the only button is Alice and the rest is disabled. Okay? The status is, okay, this one, Alice and uh, log it in okay but make sure you did the check on the server that's the first thing we check at the exam okay especially because this is the cyber security course of study the only place where you can do a reliable check and prevent operation which are forbidden is the server okay the rest is nice of course because uh, you know normal users would like to be guided Okay, disable the button when it cannot be used and stuff like that. Okay, and the same applies to all other routes. I mean, the edit route and so on. Okay, we don't have time to, to implement all the stuff now. Okay, but uh, 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 the same applies. Okay, also another thing, why, I, uh, why um, don't I show the logged in user in addition to the logout button? It would be nice to know, uh, hello Enrico, hello Harry, hello Alice, and so on, okay? Logged in user Enrico, and so on. Or maybe the role, some, some application may have uh, an administrator and users and stuff, uh, other stuff. So, you know, knowing how you logged in, that could be useful, okay? That's easy to implement. Uh, you just go into the uh, into the header row, okay, and you add, if it's logged in, let's do this uh, just an, as an, uh, what's uh, my header, okay, and uh, you can put uh, whatever you want, so like, uh, uh, let me copy and paste a little bit, so in the interest of time. I put a uh, div, uh, yeah, this, that's the same code more or less, okay? I just uh, signed in as with the name, and the name needs to be recovered by the session, so, uh, yeah. Okay, oh, what's missing here? Yes. Okay. Uh, okay, name, I need to compute this name here. Props user, I need to pass the prop uh, and so on. I think I need to pass the prop. My header. No, user is already passed. Okay, signed in as Alice. Okay, log out, log in, 
sign in as Harry, sign in as Harry, okay? And then you can play a little bit and put it on the right, uh, you know, just, uh, this is just layouting and not really important. So, uh, yeah, let me see if there are important differences the way I missed, yes, one. So, uh, of course you see that uh, there's a cookie here. We are logged in, right? So in the storage, there's a cookie. This connects it with the value. I reload the application, okay? The cookie didn't uh, disappear. The cookie is still there. Why am I not recognized from the server? Well, actually, I will be recognized from the server. Now it's the opposite. I cannot do anything, but actually I'm logged in because I have the valid session ID. Okay, but it just disabled the buttons. <laughs> okay, if I re-enable the button, they work for my user. Okay, so what could we do as a nice way of operating authentication for the user? Well, at, at uh, uh, application mount time, so when the application gets loaded by React, we could first check if we are authorized to do something or not, okay? And store it into the, um, into the uh, application state, okay? Because the cookie is there. But as a client, we don't know if it's valid or not. We reloaded the page. And that's why on the server, I also, I've also put uh, the, this, this should be, okay. I've also put a, an API on the server, so in index, that allows me to check if the session is valid or not. Get API sessions current, okay? I just need to check this from the client. When? At loading time. When you first load the application. Let's do it. So we rehearse or we uh, uh, remember how the use effect works, okay? And then I think we are done, more or less. Uh, so let me copy again, <laughs> because we need to write a bit of code, so, some code, okay? So in the beginning, this is just copy and paste. You can simply put it into your application, okay? So in app, you go uh, in app, so after the state, after the function, whatever you want, more or less in the beginning, because typically we put the use effect in the beginning, we register a use effect callback that does one, only one thing, get user info, okay? And if it's successful, so it doesn't throw an exception, this is implemented with the await. We could do then catch, let's just say. If it's successful, set log it in true, and the value is user, okay? And this is done at mount time of up. So when we first arrive at the page, okay? So let's try. Now we are logged in. You see that the cookie is there, right? Now we reload the application. And you see that we are recognized as a logged in user, also by the application. Because if you look at what the application did, it did the following. So it checked current, okay? Current returned the information about the user. Okay, information about the user, I store it in the application state, and now I operate as an authenticated user, okay? Even if I authenticated it before I reloaded the application, okay? Because the cookie is there. This, the cookies that we are using are, are stored by the browser until you close the window, okay? You can make it permanent for longer time, but we are not doing that because, again, it's easier to work this way. Uh, le let's log out, okay? Now I'm logged out. Let's reload the application. I'm logged out, and you will see there are requests that returns uh, error. They are also logged in the console. Don't worry about this. This is normal. It's just a check we are doing with the server. The server can answer, you're logged in or you're not logged in. 
And by default, uh, everything which is not, uh, you know, to add that something gets logged into the console, but you cannot do anything, okay? But this is just the console. The user doesn't see the console, okay? Normal user doesn't see the console, so it's fine. But of course, you are checking the console because you, you are developing and so on, so, so just uh, don't be worried about that. It's normal. We did a check with the user, with the server, and the user is not logged in, okay? We log in, and everything works, okay? Uh, and, and so on, okay? Uh, I think that uh, given the time, uh, we finish here, okay? If I forgot something, I will check. Uh, we will update it uh, uh, on, uh, on Thursday. We will have lecture on Thursday, room 16. Uh, it should be more or less, uh, everything should be more or less implemented. I will finish this example and we'll put the full example online with all the checks on the server side and all the implementation also of the edit, okay? That's the other option, okay? Add and edit, actually. We tested the delete. Add and edit is still missing, okay? But the logic is exactly the same. If you have any doubt on uh, Thursday, we can discuss them, okay? Okay, thank you for your attention. If you don't have questions, I think we can stop here. Tomorrow there's lab. It's not about authentication, it's still about loading, okay? I will be in there in the first one hour and a half. My colleague Antonio will be there in the second hour and a half. Okay, thank you, see you.